we jump forward into dupilumab. Let's define it. It's a recently approved drug, right? And, uh, approved for asthma. It was approved Moderate to a, severe asthma. And atopic dermatitis about yeah, two years ago. It has been approved ago. for atopic dermatitis. Okay. What is its mechanism of action? How does it differ from other drugs? Well, it blocks, um, as John has mentioned, IL-4 and IL-13. In the cytokine family, there's a lot of redundancy. So you block five, and, and then maybe eight does something similar. In this case, four and 13 have similar mechanisms, ultimately leading to the production of IgE, which is the immunoglobin that causes allergies. So this drug has been shown to fairly effectively block both of those pathways, which takes it higher up in the inflammatory pathway, whereas IgE blocker Omalizumab is much lower in the pathway. Where does dupilumab fit in the, the, the treatment algorithm for asthma? Is it, is, is it have its own niche? Is it instead of something? Is it plus something? Your question's a good one. I mean, we're befuddled. We don't have an answer because these yeah. medicines really look at the same, they're treating that same right. phenotype, the T2 high. Each has subtle differences. You mentioned benralizumab every two months. Dupilumab can be given at home. Each one has a little bit different. Which may be a problem. It's has, allowed to be given at home. Every, every two, two weeks. Every but it home. may be a problem, John. Adherence. You know, adherence, yes. at least with the other biologics, these are expensive medications, we're overseeing. They're coming to our office as allergists. That's one of the reasons I don't like infusion centers. I would much rather have that patient coming in where we can reinforce proper use so we can be enthusiastic about their uh, ability to control their disease. We're kind of cheerleaders, uh, whether it's us or our staff. So it's really important to me that I see them. If what you're saying is that at-home use may be a problem with adherence, it occurs to me that at-home use might be very nice for adherence. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's some people, obviously, that live a great distance from your practice or right. clinic. This could be a game changer. And I think there are going to be innovative ways to assure adherence with smart injectors in the future. Injectors snitching on their patients. That's you know right. You need no, I, I, absolutely. There's more of a chance that this is going to be a positive than a negative. It's just a warning that uh, it may not always be positive for every patient. All you have to do is patient. have one of your staff schedule a tele and call the patient every two weeks and say, did you take Absol it? There's the, evidence the, that worked with allergy. Oh, I know. Absolutely. Therapy. If I had a drug I could take at home and I didn't have to go to the doctor's sure. office or the pharmacy, I'd like that. And you, yeah. will, you will see that with the IL-5s. They are both working on self-administered yes. self cues. Yes. So. And, and I think um, there may be a middle ground, telemedicine, whether in the pharmacy or at home, just watching the patient uh, every two weeks, uh, administer and see if they ha have any problems. So there's ways around that. I'm for actually thinking about uh, giving Depilimap and others in the pharmacy. Uh, we give lots of injections in the pharmacy. These have very low risk. And at least that way you can track the disease, kind of a telepharmacy visit. Well, you talk, though, about your adherence devices. You have them also for injectors. So that's, that's, that's right. really, I mean, really, I think it's going to be an exciting next five to 10 years. We're going to move to the next generation. Yeah, tell me about two trials. Here's the Quest trial. There's the Venture trial. What are these things? People have been talking about them. What are these trials? Well, there are two trials. In there the are two trials. They're the <laughs> pivotal trials. And one involved looking at a group that was on inhaled medicines and seeing these were enriched. This was a population that had fairly frequent exacerbations. And what they did was they looked to see adding dupilumab. Did this translate to better outcomes? All comers. All, All comers. comers. And it did. The, there was also a study done almost in tandem, we'll say, in which they looked at people that were oral steroid dependent, the most difficult of our asthmatics, and they were able to show that they were able to reduce oral steroids by adding dupilumab and actually showed increased improvement in their control levels above and beyond, so it's a double whammy. And uh, there was a marked improvement in FEV1. If I remember correctly, it, uh, it all started about one month after treatment. It, it was very, very rapid quickly. onset. This, this one, well, they all worked impressive. quickly, but Dupilumab really seemed to have very rapid onset of action, not a lot of side effects, given at home, all comers, and pheno was a very good marker. In fact, it was a super good marker in, in following improvement. Okay, and to so make this the clear as mud, by the way, their eosinophil counts transiently went up in the beginning. That's yeah, right. Yeah, there you so go. Just, well, thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, That's just yeah, great. Yeah. Just to really confuse <laughs> you. What are the, again, give me an optimum patient for dupilumab. Who's the right one? 
We, we talked about the right patient for some of these others. Well, the first thing is, if they're an insurance company, this is a very new drug. It's <laughs> just been approved by the FDA. It takes a while for insurance companies and payers to, but I would say, John said it before, and uh, Linda did too, it's, it's that patient that um, probably has positive skin tests, probably has a elevation in IgE because they have positive skin tests, probably has somewhat of an elevated eosinophil count, it may be not four or 500, may or may not have atopic dermatitis, may have, when we did the studies, we did the clinical studies, I was amazed at its effect on the upper airway. Um, uh, I think chronic rhinosinusitis type of symptoms with nasal polyps, are probably going to respond very, very well to this and drug. And that is one of the big, biggest challenges in an allergy practice is that patient population. 